Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, this is this is a very special WrestleMania. It is the first WrestleMania having to deal with a brand split, y'all. We're going to get another one of those in a couple weeks, but uh, but yeah. First WrestleMania for with a with a brand split and first WrestleMania under the WWE logo. So I can stop saying WWF. Thank God. I kept messing up a lot. I'm sure you guys noticed in the first 18 WrestleManias. Um but you know what? Let's let's kick it off. Um I I didn't watch this match because it was on Sunday Night Heat, but um, they showed a brief little recap of it. It was uh, Lance Storm and Chief Morley. Yeah, uh, remember Val Venus turned into Sean Morley, turned into Chief Morley, who was, uh, I believe, er Eric Bischoff's chief of staff, I think. Uh, they had the Dudley boys with them because I'm pretty sure the Dudleys were like, Eric Bischoff's bitches at the time, and they beat Kane and Rob Van Dam to hold on to the World Tag Team Championships. That's the Raw Tag Titles, folks. Yeah, um, but that that was on Heat. Uh, so let's go to the pro the the show proper, and we get a WrestleMania debut of Buyaka Buyaka Lucha Underground star Rey Mysterio, and he's going up against. TNA star Broken Matt Hardy with his little mf -er, Shannon Moore for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, really fun match. This this starts the trend of Ray breaking out um, awesome superhero theme gear for WrestleMania. This year was the Flash. And, you know, it was good. I, I would have liked to see him run to the ring in the Flash gear, but Safeco Field is a huge, huge venue. So probably not the best idea. But, um... Yeah, Matt Hardy gets the win with the help of Shannon Moore. So, uh, yeah, n n nice start. This is – you can tell who's got the talent and who's got, well, other stuff. Uh, <laughs> but um, moving along, I think this is the lowest he's ever been on a WrestleMania card, and I'm talking about The Undertaker. I'm not going to tell you his match. I am, but quick, guess who wins? It's The Undertaker, of course. Uh, this is probably the least reputable match on Taker's illustrious streak. And yes, I'm putting this below his matches with like Jimmy Snuka and Jake Roberts when he was just starting out. It's a handicap match against the Big Show and A-Train. Yeah, this is supposed to be a tag match with Nathan, Nathan Jones, but Nathan Jones was attacked backstage. In other words, Nathan Jones can't fucking wrestle. Um, no, uh, but Nathan Jones comes out and evens the odds at one point. And Taker gets the win by, I believe, choke slamming A Train. But it's still, it's American Badass Undertaker. So I greatly appreciate it, even though we did not need Limp Biscuit to sing the song live. Didn't need it. Sorry, Fred Durst. Uh, I don't think you're WWE's favorite band anymore. Uh, but moving along, we have a women's championship match, and it's yet another triple threat. I completely forgot that Victoria existed for a split second because I couldn't place this in my time stream. But Victoria is the champion defending uh, with Steven Richards in her corner, and it sucks because I loved Victoria's theme song, but of course they don't have the right to tattoos all the things they said. So it wasn't on the network, and I kind of listened to it after the match once or twice. But um, it's Victoria in a triple threat match with Jazz and Trish Stratus. This match is baller. It is fucking great. Uh, really, really a lot of fun. You can tell Trish has improved immensely. Immensely, and it's only going to get better from here. Um, it's only going to improve. But Trish actually beat uh beat Victoria and Jazz. So yeah, Trish wins the women's title. She probably uh, the women's championship. She probably should have won it in Canada, if I'm being honest, and maybe have Victoria retain or or give it to Jazz cuz Jazz props to Jazz. Jazz is awesome. We forget that Jazz was so good. But Jazz was really good. 
Uh, but moving on, we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And if you guys know SmackDown, you know this was a triple threat tag team championship match. Because hashtag SmackDown 6, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, we had um, the champions, Team Angle, a.k.a. the beta version of America Alpha, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas, a.k.a. the beta versions of Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. It's strikingly similar. If you if you look at this match, you look at Shel- how Shelton and Charlie wrestle, it's strikingly similar. Like, I, I need... I want to see this as a dream match. I don't even think Charlie Haas wrestles anymore. I don't care. Pull him out of retirement. You know... Might not be a bad idea for Mayhem Mania. Uh, oh, actually, no. I never mind. Um, American Alpha's booked. Oh well. But uh, they're in a triple threat match against Los Guerreros, Eddie and Chavo. Viva la raza! They don't have the low rider. They don't have the low rider. That's unfortunate. But um, and they're going up against Chris Benoit and Rhino. Now, if you're unsure as to why Chris Benoit and Rhino were tag team partners. It's because they both had neck surgeries. Basically. Kind of weird. But um, it's really kind of funny to see this match. Uh, Ch- Team Angle wins uh, via some chicanery, which is really, it's really good to see. But seeing where Eddie and Chavo are going to be at this time next WrestleMania, they, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to see the progression. Because I don't think... Um, Oh no, they they've each had non championship matches. I was gonna say I was gonna I thought they were all always in championship matches, but that's not the case. Um, but now moving on, we we got the match of the, the the match of the night, in my opinion. My opinion. Um, some other people might point to a few others, but this the return to WrestleMania of Mister WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. He's going up against Chris Jericho. I mean, uh, I've said this a lot with a lot. If you've seen this match, if you haven't seen this match, watch this match because it's mind blowingly good. Um, there's double kip ups, there's Jericho using sweet chin music, there's sharpshooters, there's figure fours against the ring posts. It's, it's everything you want it to be and more. Uh, Shawn Michaels gets the win because naturally. And after the match, they hug. And I would really love to hear what Jericho said to Michaels. We don't because Jericho hits a low blow and leaves Shawn Michaels laying in the ring because he's Chris Jericho. But yeah, uh, such a good match. Over 20 minutes. Really, really fun match. You have to watch it. it it's it's fantastic. Um, now, at some point, I believe it was after this match. We, we have to have a serious discussion. Uh, this may be the worst celebrity involvement at a WrestleMania. Basically because the, the term celebrity is defined extremely loosely. Uh, dur- during, the, um, during the early 2000s, the early aughts as we like to call them, Miller Lite was, was running a series of ads... With these two attractive women yelling at each other about one thing or the other, like peanut butter or jelly, uh, pizza or tacos, I don't know. They would just, they'd each have a very strong opinion. They would not back it up except by saying the word back and forth to each other, and they would break out into a fight, generally resulting in them in being scantily clad. Uh, they were colloquially referred to as the Miller Catholic girls. They are the celebrities for this year's WrestleMania. <laughs> If you don't count Fred Durst, which most people don't anymore. Um, but yeah, th- they had a couple segments backstage where they're like arguing between who created WrestleMania, Hulk Hogan or Vince McMahon. Uh, one of the Catfight girls does not know how to say the name Hulk Hogan. She says, Hulk Hogan. Like, it- it's horrible. It. But this culminated in saying that they're at WrestleMania. They're going to fight in the ring. And then, obviously, that's not going to occur. So they set up a bed on the stage. Somehow, Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler got involved. Uh, it, it was just a it was it was a pillow fight. 
basically. Uh, someone attacked Jonathan Coachman or the coach. Uh, you know, it was it was a weird segment. Let's just move on. Um, the World Heavyweight Championship match. Oh boy, this match is controversial because now it's not my single greatest missed decision at WrestleMania. Mine will be Warrior losing to uh, Warrior being Savage, but that's because I'm a Macho Man Mark. But uh, Triple H, the world champion, going up against Booker T. It's a good match. Um, Booker T really should have won here. He really should have a lot. He didn't because uh, this, 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 this is uh, Triple H is raw now, kids. It's Triple H is raw, and uh, yeah. You, you, ba- basically, this is this is the year where Triple H decided to destroy every remnant of WCW. I believe this is the year that he fought Scott Steiner, Booker T, Goldberg. Who knows? DDP might have snuck in there. I doubt it, but who in the hell knows? Um, Triple H wins. He shouldn't have. Good match. Poor Booker T. Don't worry, Book. You're going to go to SmackDown. You're going to be just fine. Um, Okay. Moving along, we have a street fight to decide, I guess, who made WrestleMania. Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon. Um, wow, this is violent. <laughs> um, this is this is a fun match. This, you know, this might be the best Hulk Hogan match at WrestleMania. It might be. I, I think. I don't know if I'm still leaning toward Bundy. This one's really great. This one is really, really fun. I think... Oh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's Hogan's last match at WrestleMania. I think... I'm not positive. I, To be honest, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The 20s kind of blend together for me a little bit. They do. They, a lot of them blend together. But I think this might be Hulk Hogan's last match at WrestleMania. And uh, if it is, it's a good one to go out on. He and Vince beat the crap out of each other. Roddy Piper makes an appearance. Uh, there, there's an awesome, awesome visual of Vince McMahon holding a lead pipe bleeding from the forehead, just peering up from the ring like that, like that Snapchat filter. It's like, yeah. it's awesome. It's really, really good. Um, but Hogan gets the win because it's WrestleMania, so Hogan wins. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's a really fun match. They go a long time, too. And I think Vince even hits a leg drop through the announce table off a ladder. So, I mean, yeah, you want to see this match. Now, moving on, we get uh, kind of a bittersweet match. Now, if you know the backstory of WrestleMania 18, uh, 19, excuse me, this match almost didn't happen. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was in a really bad way with a lot of um, energy drinks and stuff like that. I don't know if that's the whole story, but that's what we've been told from through years and years of him talking about um, where he was like passing out and all sorts of things. He knew it was going to be his last match. And um, it's up against The Rock. And The Rock is full on Hollywood rock. Like if you like what The Miz is doing now, Miz is essentially just copying what The Rock did back in 2003. It's really, it's a really fun match. Rock wears Stone Cold's vest for half the match. Rock does a stunner. Austin does a rock bottom. It, it's really good. It's a fun match. It's not their best, probably for the, probably for the Stone Cold reasons. But um, Rock actually gets the win. He gets the win. Um, I mean, you can tell he he says something to Austin like "thank you," you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Rock gets the win and. This is Stone Cold Steve Austin's last match at WrestleMania, you guys. It's very sad. It's not it's not his last appearance, don't worry. He he shows up a whole lot more times. He's he's showing up next year. Ooh, next year. I don't want to talk about that yet. Uh, but yeah. Um but yeah, this is Austin's last match. Good one to go out on. Still still kind of miss seeing Steve Austin matches, to be honest. I really do. 
there there are a lot of punches, but I still kind of miss them. All right, now moving on to the main event. The crowd is weird during this main event. Um, it's Kurt Angle, the WWE champion, going up against the Royal Rumble winner, Brock Lesnar. Now, I remember going into this, everyone and their mother was concerned that Kurt was going to break his neck. Everyone was concerned. I remember they had to even do a fake-out angle on SmackDown, literally a fake-out angle because they threw in Eric Angle to take the place of Kurt to, to take an F5. Yeah, it's it's in the video package. It's literally a fake out angle. I'm not joking. I'm not being snarky either. Uh it's yeah, but but at the but by the end of the match, if you've seen this one before, and chances are you have, you know it's almost Brock that almost paralyzes himself. Because Brock, like an idiot, um tries to go for a shooting star press when angle is way too far away. Way too far away. Um, but this match is a lot of fun. It's a lot. There's a lot of chain wrestling. It reminds me a lot of the beginning of the angle of the Brett Sean Iron Man match. It reminds me a lot of that. I mean, they pick it up. They pick it up towards the end. And, um, Lesnar gets the win after missing the shooting star shooting star press just by doing an F5 on instinct and pinning Kurt Angle. But you can tell Lesnar is out. He is out of it. But um, it's a good match. It's really, really good. Before before that whole, quite frankly, scary ending happens, it's a really fun match. And this is not going to be the last WrestleMania with a scary ending. Uh, we'll get to that much later down the line with The Miz. But, yeah, um, it's it's a good match. This this overall a pretty decent WrestleMania. Pretty decent WrestleMania. I don't know if I'd put it in my top ten, but it's a it's around there. It might be might be bomb half of the top ten. All right. Um. So we're done with the teens, you guys. WrestleMania can almost drink, but first we gotta hit that wonderful number twenty, and that's back where it all begins again. Madison Square Garden, New York City. I was there. I was at WrestleMania 20. So I oh, I got some stories to tell about that. Um, but yeah. So uh if you want to hit me up, ask, you know, if you got any comments about these videos, got anything you want to hear from me in like the upcoming manias, hopefully I cover them. Uh hit me up at Mad Mike483. Leave some comments on these YouTubes. Hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, hit me hit up with hashtag MM on that Mayhem Show. I'll get back to you on that. And um, yeah, so for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike. We'll see you guys at the Garden for WrestleMania 20.